guys, it's Kid Bike Tester. Do you know what to look for when buying a balance bike? Do you need air tires? What about a handbrake? And did you know that balance bikes are not one size fits all? But I'm just a kid, so Natalie's here to explain everything. Thanks, Kid Bike Tester. In this balance bike buying guide, we are going to break down the different features of balance bikes and what to look for when purchasing one for your child. As parents ourselves, we've been reviewing balance bikes for over 10 years and have learned firsthand what to look for and what to avoid when selecting the best balance bike for your child. To start off our list, we start with the most important thing, the size of the balance bike. Although manufacturers often market balance bikes as one size fits all, don't believe the hype. Balance bikes vary greatly in size, and the seat height of a bike is the most accurate indicator of a good fit. The seat height of a bike is measured from the ground to the lowest part of the saddle. A properly fitting balance bike will allow the seat to sit at least one inch or more below the child's inseam. The seat post of a balance bike will adjust several inches up and down to allow for your child to grow. You always want to purchase a bike that has at least two to three extra inches for growth. This gap is essential to allow the child to comfortably sit on the bike while pushing off the ground with their feet. If a child has a slight bend in their knee while sitting on the bike, you know the seat is correctly set. If the seat is set too low and the child has too much bend in the knee, running and gliding becomes less natural and less efficient. If the seat is set too high so that the child's legs are almost straight, it becomes very difficult to run, gain momentum, and balance the bike. As a result, it's absolutely necessary to know the seat height range of a bike in order to determine the actual size of the bike. To get the best fit, be sure to measure your child's inseam first. The wheel size of the balance bike, which is a measurement of the wheel's diameter, is a great secondary way to ensure a great fit for your child. Typically, the larger the wheel size, the larger the balance bike. So while wheel size will likely help you quickly narrow down your options, seat height is still king in finding the best fit. Balance bikes come in three main wheel sizes, 12 inch, 14 inch, and 16 inch. Most balance bikes have 12 inch wheels. 14 inch and 16 inch balance bikes have bigger wheels and usually bigger frames to fit older riders. Their seat height ranges are also taller than those found on 12 inch bikes. Almost all balance bikes have either foam or air tires. Which tire type you choose will determine the amount of traction and cushioning a bike gets on various surfaces. Foam tires are the most common type of balance bike tire because they are much cheaper than air tires. Foam tires don't provide any cushioning and offer considerably less traction than air tires. If your child is going to stick to paved sidewalks and won't be jumping off curbs, foam tires will be just fine. If there is room in your budget, we always recommend air tires over foam tires. Air tires provide lots of cushioning and much more traction. Kids riding with air tires can happily and comfortably ride on everything from paved trails to gravel or single track. As a general rule, you don't want your child's bike to weigh more than 30% of their weight. When it comes to balanced bikes and very young children, a light bike can make a world of a difference in how easy it is to ride and in the child's motivation to keep going after they fall. For toddlers and preschoolers, a balanced bike over 10 pounds is going to be difficult for most kids to manage. If your child is young, try to keep that weight under nine pounds or less. For pre-K and above, balanced bikes are larger and thus heavier. A bike around 10 or 11 pounds should be the max for a child this age. Most balance bikes these days are generally lightweight. The weight of the bike, however, should be factored in along with the overall quality and components of a bike. High quality bikes with air tires and handbrakes can actually weigh more than a budget bike, but they provide a much better overall riding experience. When using a balance bike, kids usually use their feet to stop, but handbrakes are also a great option. When possible, we always recommend purchasing a bike with a handbrake. Why do we prefer handbrakes? Handbrakes can help prevent injury, prolong the life of a child's shoes, and better prepare a child to ride a pedal bike. Usually between two and a half and three and a half years, most preschoolers have enough hand-eye coordination to use a handbrake. Once they learn this skill, kids tend to use their handbrake along with their feet for faster, safer stopping. Once mastered on a balance bike, Kids don't need to relearn how to use a handbrake on a regular bike. While young toddlers simply don't have the developmental skill to use a handbrake, they will certainly gain those skills as they get older. So purchasing a bike with a handbrake is a worthy investment. Made a bike! 
What? Yeah, look. What'd you do? Foot rests on balance bikes are a small platform or pegs that kids can rest their feet on while gliding. While foot rests can be fun for some kids, they are certainly not required. Kids instinctively hold up their feet while they glide. It just comes naturally. Typically, it's the parents who are concerned about where a child puts their feet while gliding, not the kids. In fact, in our 10 years of testing bikes, we've never had a kid ask where to put their feet. There are many different foot rest designs. A properly designed footrest is tucked back under the seat and out of the way of the child's stride. A great example of a good footrest is found on the Strider. Many budget bikes have poorly designed footrests. These footrests stick out too far and are too forward, causing your little rider to hit the back of their calves on the footrest while running. Because footrests aren't necessary, it's better to err on the side of caution and not purchase a bike with a potentially problematic footrest. The frame of a balance bike can be made of aluminum, steel, or wood. Metal frame balance bikes are the most common. Metal bikes come in steel or aluminum alloys and can make a big difference in the weight of the bike. Aluminum alloy 6061 is the cream of the crop in balance bikes. It's lightweight, strong, rust proof, and is used in higher end bikes, such as the Woom, Pelo, Prevelo, and the Yidu U2. Some budget bikes are also made out of aluminum, so they are also extremely lightweight but their quality isn't as high or as durable as the high-end bikes. Steel frames are common on mid-range and budget bikes, but can create a heavier bike, which can also be prone to rust. While seemingly minor, the grips of a balance bike are a safety feature that are worth taking a look at. A rubber grip with a knobby end protects kids' hands when the handlebars run into the wall and also prevents the hands from hitting the ground during falls. They can also prevent the handlebar from scratching your cars. Most balance bikes will have protective bumpers. The shape and material of the grip determine how comfortable it is for little hands to hold on to those handlebars. High-end bikes like Loom have ergonomically shaped grips for maximum comfort. Mid-range bikes have cylindrical grips that are soft and padded. Some budget bikes have hard plastic grips, which can start to hurt a rider's hands after a short period of ride time. Over time, most grips on budget bikes wear through, causing the metal handlebar to poke out of the end. While the exposed metal bar is not likely to hurt your child, it can certainly damage cars. The front and rear axle bolts of a balance bike won't affect your child's riding very much, but they are very telling of the overall quality of the bike. Axle bolts on balance bikes come in a wide variety of styles. These bolts can range from large traditional bolts to low profile bolts recessed into the frame of the bike. With time, larger bolts that protrude out from the bike become scratched and dented. This can, in turn, lead to small legs getting scratched by the bolts, especially when getting on and off the bike. To prevent this, many bikes come with plastic caps to cover the bolts, but many budget bikes do not. Higher-end bikes, like the Wim 1, have flat or low-profile bolts that are actually recessed into the fork to prevent any possible contact with little legs. Turning limiters on balance bike prevent the handlebars from doing a full revolution around the bike. By doing so, it helps prevent sharp turns as well as prevent brake cables from getting twisted. There are pros and cons to turning limiters, but they shouldn't be a prime factor in selecting a bike. One of the main benefits of a turning limiter is that they prevent a child from turning too sharply and jackknifing the bike. This is true for all bounce bikes, but on bikes with a handbrake, the turning limiter also prevents the brake cable from getting twisted around the frame and potentially stretched out. Detractors of turning limiters claim they essentially act like training wheels for the handlebars and prevent kids from learning proper steering while they are still young and riding at slow speeds. In the past, turning limiters were often too limiting, but most balance bikes with limiters today have a wide range of motion. Still think balance bikes are simple? There are a lot more to balance bikes than people realize. For more information about any of these features, please visit our site at twowheelingtots.com and more specifically, the article, Balance Bikes, How to Choose. The link can be found below. If you're ready to take a look at our favorite balance bikes, click on our video right here and you can see our top picks for balance bikes in action. If you like this video and would like to see more from our kid bike tester, be sure to like and subscribe and don't forget to get out and ride.